Modifications to a Stuart Beam engine, part 5. Time has come to dismantle the cylinder and associated parts to find out why it is loose. This was a very fiddly job. And for that reason, some of the sequences are running at a higher speed. But that is not so at the moment. Everything's running at normal speed. The first thing to go is the crossbar that operates the valve spindle. To remove the second nut, I needed to hold the spindle using a pair of pliers, but very gently, because I don't want to see any telltale plier marks on the spindle once I've done the job. It's easy to prevent the jaws of pliers marking work. Get a piece of brass, fold it in half, then use the pliers just to clamp the piece of brass very tightly to the spindle. With that part of the mechanism removed and in a safe place, it's time to remove the fixings that hold the watch parallel motion in place. I did this using a nut spinner and a spanner, but it is of course possible to remove these parts using two spanners. One down and one to go, I'm lifting it out of the way, and here I'm turning the engine around to get to the other side. The fixings on this side were the opposite way round. The nut was on the outside and the bolt was on the inside. Same principle though, I'm using a nut spinner and a spanner to remove them. After I'd done the job, it did occur to me that I should have just dropped the beam and it would have been a lot easier. But to be honest, even with the beam in this position, it was quite easy to do the job. But as you can see, if you drop the beam, there's plenty more space. I wondered if I could use the nut spinner at a slight angle to remove the bolt. And yes, it was quite simple to do that. At least for part of the way. It was loose enough to be undone by just using my fingers. Next, I'm removing the pin that holds the piston rod fork to the beam. This part was surprisingly tight, showing evidence of over-tightening at some stage. I go on a lot about over-tightening. Over-tightening does cause other problems other than shearing the bolt or making a mess of the thread. It makes a fork like this apply too much pressure to the beam. Also, it works in the same way with a valve fork. Here I'm removing the pin which holds the eccentric rod to the upright rocker arm. This was a horrible job. It was incredibly tedious and very slow. I had to keep rotating the spanner and I couldn't even do it by using my fingers because the thread on the bolt was a very tight fit in the hole in the casting. Just so viewers don't slip into a coma, I'm running this at a higher speed. I nearly slipped into a coma several times actually doing the job. But after a while, I removed the first two bolts, turned the engine round, and did exactly the same at the other side. This is worse, the flywheel is in the way. This bolt was bad enough, but the one next to the flywheel was far worse. I had to keep rotating the spanner every time I turned it. While I was doing this job, though, there was a benefit. It took my mind off the pain that I've been in for the last couple of weeks. It's getting better, and I do believe my voice is improving. The five and a half hour operation took its toll, and I'm beginning to doubt if ever I'll be back to normal. Things are a bit different. The cylinder base plate is held to the cylinder using six small countersunk screws, and someone has drilled the countersinks far too big. This is a problem. I don't know why whoever did this decided that was a good idea, but it's not a good idea because if the countersunk holes are too big, then the countersunk bolts bottom on the thread. And there's only one way out of this. If the countersink is too deep, you have to drill out the ends of the threaded holes in the casting to allow the countersunk bolt to go further in. This is very bad practice. And under no circumstances must you use silicone sealant in an application like this. It's useless. Moving on, I'm removing the steam chest cover to have a look inside the valve chest. I was trying to figure out why the bottom two bolts of the steam chest cover are bolts and the others are studs. I'm really puzzled by this. Maybe the builder ran out of studs. Sod's law or Murphy's law says that the last bolt that you take out will be the most difficult. 
and indeed, in this case, it was. But with all the fixings out of the way, with a bit of leverage, I removed the cover altogether. This is what I found inside the slide valve, and I was pleased to see that the steam chest cover had a gasket. In this clip, I'm unscrewing the valve spindle because I want to have a look at the port faces of the slide valve, and also to check that it's in the right way round, because in this engine, the ports are not right in the middle of the actual steam chest. This is not a mistake, it's the way it's meant to be. I've never worked on one of these Stuart Grasshopper beam engines before, so when I put it back together, I should learn something. In this clip, I'm removing the framework on top of the cylinder that supports the Watts parallel motion. And once all the fixings were removed, I carefully withdrew the piston, being very careful not to tear or split the cylinder gasket. This is surprisingly easy to do when removing pistons from cylinders, particularly if the engine is old, which this one isn't, and the gaskets are brittle, which this one isn't. In this clip, I'm removing the old graphited yarn valve packing, and I'm going to replace it with Teflon coated yarn, which seems to be better. Or at least better than the modern graphited yarn. The old stuff was good, but I do think it contained asbestos, which was not good, but at least it didn't fall from together like the modern stuff. This part is not a particularly good fit in the hole, and the hole is not in the centre of the beam, but you can't have everything. The engine does work quite well, irrespective of this. But hopefully the engine should work much better once I've finished modifying it. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.